Yeah, so uh, a couple of things to lead into this uh, talk about Potiphar's wife uh, to start with. The first, the first thing is that uh, we don't even, this story normally focuses on Joseph, right? This is how he um, showed you know, wisdom and things and in the face of temptation and all that kind of stuff. We don't focus on Potiphar's wife, and there's, there's, there's a reason for that. Um, and the reason for that really is that we don't actually know why she did this. Um, we know what she did, but we don't really know why. Um, so today, like I said earlier, today is going to be a little bit of speculation on that. We're going to focus on one of the particular reasons why we think she, um, tried to seduce Joseph and all that kind of thing, um, but as we go through the story, if you guys have other theories um, about why she did what she did or who she was or any of that kind of thing, um, I want to welcome all of that because this is kind of um, an opportunity for us to talk about why a situation like this can happen. Okay, um, uh, 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 it's interesting that we don't we don't even know her name. Okay, there's there's. Uh, Jewish writings that happen after the Bible that name her, and she's got some funky name. You can go Google it. Um, Sorry for the Z, I think. Um, uh, but, but there's a couple of, uh, of reasons why we might not even know her name, and that could be because no one knew her name. It might have been back in that day, back in that culture, that she was like a trophy wife of Potiphar. You know, Potiphar was um, a bigwig um, in Egypt, and um, it could be that that she was like literally a trophy wife and, and nobody even knew about her because she was or any of that kind of thing. And so that's why her name wasn't even mentioned because it actually wasn't really even known. Um, so that's one uh, theory about, about that. But um, where we're going to focus today, we're going to get to the story. That we're in Genesis 39, by the way, is where we're at. And it's the whole chapter of Genesis 39. Um, and... Uh, uh, the place we're going to focus with her is um, idle hands, boredom. Okay, the, the intro to, to the lesson talks about um, uh, whenever your kids ask you or, or tell you I'm bored. Have you ever had a, a kid tell you that they're bored before? Um, you know, good parents, we have answers for that, right? Which is, here, I got some chores for you or, or whatever, you know, and, and so quickly they find things to do other, you know, that, that keep them from being bored. Um, but the idea, and the idea is that um, uh, that idle hands, boredom, is just a recipe for a mess. Um, Benjamin Franklin says uh, that idle hands are the devil's playthings, right? So um, the speculation for today's story, of Potiphar's wife, is that she, you know, just didn't have anything to do. Okay, so so why not? Uh, Go after the pool boy. So uh, speaking of the pool boy, let's talk about Joseph, okay? So Joseph, if you if you if this were a movie or a soap opera, you would picture Joseph as that guy. He's the, the chiseled, good looking dude that goes and does his work with his shirt off and he's all you know bronzed and just a, a nice looking like right. That right, right. <laughs> right. right. I was <laughs> 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 We have lots of deception going on in the room. That's right. I, I, I love it. So yes, like like Greg, um, the, the pool boy. That's who we're thinking of here. Okay, he's a really nice guy. He he actually um, in in his and I don't quite know how to how to um, articulate this other than to say that. He came about his blessing as a slave in Egypt under Potiphar kind of from divine intervention because he was not supposed to be in the stature that he was. Okay, and of course, you know the divine intervention of Joseph all the way back from him being sold into slavery at the beginning. I mean, God had a plan all along. Um, so I think it was divine how this was all placed. And that's, you know, any, anytime you look at a, um, when a story is in the Bible, there's obviously a reason for it, right? So, so we have some, some divine intervention here going, going on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to read through the story. And I'm going to pause after every few verses. And we're going to, um, uh, we're, 
going to talk about kind of kind of where we're going with this, and then we'll be briefly from that point forward. So um, we will be in Genesis 39. <clears throat> All right, starting with verse 1. Uh, now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, and, and an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him uh, from the Ishmaelite who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he prospered, and he lived in a house of his e Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, <clears throat> and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, uh, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted his he entrusted to his care everything he, had, he owned. From time to time, he put him in charge of the household and all of the things that he owned. And the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So he left Joseph's care and everything he had with Joseph in charge. And he did not concern himself with anything except for the food that he ate. Uh, now, Joseph was well built and handsome, and after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to bed with me. Okay, so we're going to stop right there. Um, basically, what happened here is Potiphar trusted Joseph fully and said, look, I'm going to put you in charge of my house. Okay, so Potiphar is an official, so he's off working, he's off doing his thing. Um, so, jo I mean, literally, like, like Joseph's the bull boy, literally. He's the one that's in care of Potiphar's house. Okay, and so Potiphar's wife is there. Um, and Potiphar is, uh, uh, I mean, Potiphar's wife obviously notices him and asks, asks him to come to bed with her. Um, now, question um, about that is, well, actually, so up to this point, let's just ask the next question up here on the board. What stands out to you up to this point? Okay, is there anything that jumps out um, about the situation? Let's just dive in. We're not to the second part yet, so so just just what stands out to you right now? If not any, any <clears throat> cool. I'd say he's more than a cool boy. Okay. Okay, he's running the whole house. Yeah. He's the one there day in and day out calling the shots. Yeah. And everything else. And so he probably does look and, and is appears to be at the, in a pretty high position of power, just only below Potiphar. <laughs> probably not around or you know, not that engaged because he's Potiphar's doing it, and obviously he's doing a very good job of it right. as well. So he's successful. Mm -hmm. And this is now think about it this way too. Um, going to what Jeremy was talking about is this a, is this happening quickly, or is this over a long period of time? Is he has he been there, and um, and has he established this kind of dominance over the house? Was it fast, or was it? Do you think it, it it was something that he's been doing for a long time? That takes time. Yeah, it's 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 something um, that's kind of a rhetorical question. Yeah, we, we we want us. I want us to be thinking about the idea that this is going on day after day after day after day after day after day after day. Potiphar's out working. Potiphar's wife is home, and Joseph is there taking care of the house. Okay, uh, in that leadership position. So, um, uh, yeah, and 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 you can see, and part part of the reason for that is right there in verse seven. It says, "After a while, um, uh, his master's wife took notice of Joseph." Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, I was going to say, you know, Potiphar is the captain of the guard, so I mean, obviously he has duties as it relates to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. So outside the house, I mean, he's obviously has he's busy with that. But right. basically, when he comes home, the only thing is worry about food. And yeah. I'm not sure. I'm sure it's not that he has to prepare food. I'm sure it's. I just think he. Right. Yeah. You know, right. So yeah. everything else. Uh, he's basically as soon as he walks through the door, he's shut down. Yeah. Like, he just doesn't do anything. Yeah. So I think that going to lead to part of this issue too because if you have all that free time nothing around the house needs to be done then you should be taking care of your wife right and yet he's worried about eating yeah he's worried about eating makes you wonder kind of what Potiphar might have looked like okay was he what compared to Joseph was he okay I don't <laughs> so what is Potiphar, if he was concerned about eating, I mean, let's just go there, right? I mean, again, we're, we're doing a lot of speculating here. So so Potiphar comes home and, you know, sits on his, you know, Egyptian recliner, whatever that looks like, um, you know, and he's, you know, he doesn't have an Egyptian remote control for the, his Egyptian TV. He's got a plate full of food in front of him, probably, okay, because that's, that's what he's worried about. Um, so you can already tell a little bit of, uh, of issues with Potiphar's Potter, Potter, wife to begin with. Now, when you look at what this, the whole situation, okay, Potiphar, Potiphar is one of the higher officials. So 
what if Potiphar's wife is literally just kind of eye candy, right? Just somebody kind of by his side that he can say she that he can say he has her, you know, and that kind of thing. And she's this um, she's a looker also, but not but that's all it is, okay? Um, and I am the wife of an official. I have a sense of entitlement. I can get whatever I want. So who are you, servant of my husband, to tell me what I can't have, right? So I think maybe that question there at the end of verse 7 was almost, to her, in her mind, was like rhetorical. Like, well, you know, you don't get to say no to me, right? So this is this is the situation that we're, that we're encountering here mm-hmm. is, um, and, you know, again, with Potiphar being gone and the, the house being taken care of, um, boredom is and just, I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't doing anything. I mean, I don't know what she was doing out there long. I have no idea other than, you know, stirring up a way to seduce Joseph or something. So, <clears throat> okay, let's keep going. Uh, but he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in his house. Everything he owns has he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except for you, uh, because you are his wife. How then could I go and do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though he, she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. One day, um, when he went into the house to attend to his duties and none of the household servants was inside, she caught him by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. Um, so let's take a look at the next question, which is uh, what tactic does, does Potiphar's wife use now? Okay, she's being rejected over and over and over again. Um, and where does she go uh, at this point? I'm pretty sure she sent all the servants away. <laughs> yeah. Your house. Yeah, that's right. Got business to take care of. That's right. <clears throat> I kind of wonder what excuse she made. Um, <clears throat> Hey, if you guys haven't been to service yet this morning, uh, talking about sexual sin, this is uh, it, it's funny because Dale was talking about the fact that he and Doomy aren't smart enough to coordinate these two um, sermons because this one, the one that Dale did, was supposed to be last weekend, um, but it was uh, this weekend instead, and it's talking about really what sexual sin can do, and this is a uh, prime example of that. So yeah, he... Um, I mean, she emptied the house, okay? Um, and uh, what do you think, I mean, what do you think was going through her mind when she emptied the house? She's not used to being told no. Right. So she's like, I'll do it myself. She's just going to take care of it. Yeah. yeah. She's going she's gonna to make this happen. It wasn't to have a hard, hard conversation. Right. <laughs> you know, they use, you know, they use, they, they use the story of, um, um, uh, what are their names? Um, Amnon and Tamar. Yeah, Tamar and Tamar. Yeah. Who? Amnon and Tamar. Amnon and Tamar. Amnon and Tamar, right. And, and, and how um, the, the story of that rape in the, in the Old Testament. And I feel like this is almost an example of Potiphar's wife was going to do that to Joseph. Like, she was she was not going to, to, to be told no again, Okay. Um, so we have a situation here where, um, and she wanted to make sure of that by emptying the house and, and all that kind of thing. I wonder um, if by emptying the house that shows just a little bit of her understanding that this really wasn't something that should be happening. Oh. I'm no witnessing. Right. I, 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 I do. I totally agree with that. And I think, um, and, and, and let, let's keep going in, in here and talk about kind of what happened afterwards. Um, Okay, so so verse 12, um, he left the cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. Now, th- there's an interesting thing about the cloak. They don't know what the, the, the word, the Hebrew word for cloak actually was. They don't know if it was the outer garment or if it was the undergarment. And he actually, like, <clears throat> like and to, again, to beat this pool boy thing down, you know, if, if he was, um, you know, he just hot and whatever. So maybe he was doing his work not wearing a whole lot, maybe just like a thing. He might have left the house buck naked. Like, we don't know. You know, we don't, it, 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 there, there's, there's speculation as to what the cloak actually was. Um, nonetheless, he left it in there. Um, that's verse 12. So verse 13, when she saw that he left his cloak in her hand uh, and had run out of the house, she called, she says, I have an idea. There's no one here. Um, she says, look, she said to them, this Hebrew man has brought us, uh, brought to us to make sport 
has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. Um, she kept the cloak beside her until uh, until his master came home, and then she told him about. Uh, she told him this story that the Hebrew slave he brought came here to make sport of me, but as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. Okay, now uh, why does she go public with this finally, rather than continuing to keep it private to keep trying to get Joseph? She has guilt that she had. She finally had enough, right? She's, she's mad. Okay. Now, I kind of wonder sometimes maybe if that's why she didn't leave the house. Well, so she could have this story. She could actually uh, she could actually accuse him of trying to rape her without anybody knowing, right? And they're not even if he had agreed, right. she might have that on her. That's right. Now here's a question. Now well, here, let's let's keep going for a second. Um when his master, oh yeah, yeah, let's let's finish the next paragraph. Next two verses. When his master heard the story, uh, his wife told him, saying, "This is how your slave treated me." He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in the prison, in the place where the king's prisoners were confined. Okay, so why, or, or do you think Potiphar bought his wife's story? Well, one, so I'm in the BESD translation. One thing I'm noticing is. Um, it says in verse 11, she called to the men in her house and said to them, See, he has brought among us a Hebrew to laugh at us. And then down again in 19, uh, as soon as his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him, this is the way your servant treated me. She immediately starts blaming him for bringing the Hebrew. But she immediately starts blaming her husband for, right. for, for basically putting her in this position. Right. And so, and then it said, um, See, and it says, this is the way your servant treated me, and his anger was immediately kindled. Right. Meaning, I'm pretty sure this is not the first time she blamed him for stuff that has right. happened to her. And so, I mean, I'm sure he was upset with the situation, but at the same time, you have this wife who's immediately blaming the whole problem on him. Right. That he caused it. Absolutely. And so when it says that he burned with anger, was this anger <laughs> in Joseph for, for, for sleeping with his wife or trying to, or was this anger with his wife. <laughs> I was yeah. going to say the house was running really smooth. Yeah, was, yeah. I mean, she forced his hand. Right. right. He forced Potiphar's hand. Right. With this. Right. So yeah. I, you know. Or I think Potiphar would have said, "You know what? You can have him. Just don't make his problem for me." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, he's told him so many times. times. He's mad. Or his anger now kindled because he can't just be this hair about food anymore. No. <laughs> now his whole world is screwed up. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, I mean, you know, I mean, like uh -huh. he's probably mad all the time. Like, Unhappy right. wife, blaming me. Now my house, my house is all screwed up. Right, the house is running really smooth. Yes, right? really so much so that all he had to do was come home and think about food and yeah. go to bed and eat yeah. and go to bed. Yeah. Right. So yeah, yeah his stuff ends everything. Yeah, he's he's toast. Yep. Yeah. And so then, uh, I, I guess this maybe we've sort of answered the question already, but why? Because because this offense is punishable by death um, easily. Okay, easily punishable by death. So why didn't Joseph? Um, be put to death or sentenced to death. Uh, what I'm, it's all interesting, even though we're just kind of we're kind of dabbling with the story a little bit. But everything right. that's happening right now is God weaving, right? Everything He's doing, the yes. way who purchased Him, where He went, what happens, where He goes next, and how that brings Him up through the cupbearers and the everything that's happening is God weaving the story right now. Yep. Right, and, and to to get Him to this next part, and so this part is dumb. Right, and what if this hadn't happened? You know, it's we can play those stories, but everything that's happening right now is God weaving. And I think that's the that's the part I keep looking at because immediately he goes to prison. I'm skipping ahead a little bit, right? And even the warden's like, "Man, you're the best. You can be in charge of that." You know, it's like everything he does, he keeps climbing, right? He keeps he gets knocked down, he goes back up again. You know, I, I think every time when I, when I read this story, it's like the more I read it, the more I see God's weaving this amazing story right now. Well, and he didn't just put him in prison. Put him in prison where the king's prisoners right. were kept. Right. So I mean, there's. I mean, to me, there's probably different levels of prison mm -hmm. that you, you know. But so I think Potiphar probably knew that he just didn't do what he was accused of. However, he couldn't say, "Yeah, shut up, wife. We're going to keep this the way it is because I need my, I want my peace." Right. So, 
putting him in the king's prison just i mean it's like zach said he's <clears throat> this is god's plan so because we learned later in the king's prison you have the ability to earn your way back to the king's favor right or if it's your if it puts to death obviously you can't do that again. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> well I love the fact that God is at work through all of this. I really love the fact that God can work in broken situations and, and uh, with a broken, like the, the way the wife handled things. And no, let's let's not. Um, I know this isn't about Potiphar, but let's not let Potiphar off the hook. But he was um, handling his household right either. Okay, um, you know he was uh, very much. I think kind of that. Enti- he had that entitlement sense of entitlement too. Like like everybody else needs to cater to me, take care of me. You know uh, how how dare you? You know, uh, kind of what, what do you expect when you're not taking care of your wife? That you leave a handsome man at home all day for all the women in your house to enjoy? Yep. What's your expectation? I I would not do that. Let's just let's just say that. Like I'm out on that, right? But yep. those are thoughts we can look back at other people's lives and we can say you were stupid there and you were dumb there, right? This is one of those moments. But yeah, there's obviously a lot of other things going on. That's right. There's a great paragraph in here that talks about Potiphar's wife and how if we had, if she does have the sense of entitlement, like, like we, we think she does, then she got what she wanted again. Okay, she's 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 gotten what she's wanted all along, except for Joseph, right? So that's why she's so angry. So she she creates the story. Um, I kind of believe with clearing the house and stuff that she was probably not even she'd been rejected so much that she knew Joseph wasn't gonna. <laughs> Say yes when the house was empty. So she was doing this on purpose. Like I am going to make it look like he was trying to rape me, so that I can get in, thrown in jail or killed or whatever. So she she got what she wanted. Okay. Um, uh, <clears throat> I love it. it says she's uh, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Right. And so um, uh, it says one of the hard truths of this fallen world is demonstrated. And this episode draws to a close that the good and righteous behavior of a God fearing person often receives no immediate reward and instead gives way to tantrums um, and devices of another's idle entitlement. It's a mouthful idle entitlement. Um, so <clears throat> as we look at this, let's finish, let's finish the story um, and then kind of talk about how, what, what it means for us. Okay. Um, but while Joseph was in was there in prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him the kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all of those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. Uh, so he was even blessed in prison to be a leader there. So this is the kind of character Joseph was, which is pretty remarkable. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph. So I love that. So it's like these leaders put Joseph in charge, and they're like, set it and forget it. We don't have to, you know, we don't have to mess with, with if, if Joseph's in charge, I don't have to think about it anymore. Um, <clears throat> I paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Um, so I love the fact that God is working in that. Um, but let's talk about, let's go back to like what led to this, okay? So um, the, the, the thought here is that because of the fact that the house was taken care of and because of the fact that Potiphar was, was Never home, and when he was home, all he was concerned about was what he was having for dinner that night. Um, we have a wife here that has idle hands, okay? She's bored. Um, so, <clears throat> a couple of lessons, and yeah, y'all comment on these or tell me what you, what you think. But um, the first one is to stay alert, don't allow boredom to give the devil a foothold, okay? Um, I don't know if you guys have thought about this before. In the next slide, we're going to kind of talk about what that looks like for us. Um, but do you let boredom give the devil a foothold? Just ask yourself that question. Um, surround yourself with support. Okay? Do, you, do you find yourself isolated or do you find yourself um, uh, surrounded by people who um, support you? I suspect, we don't, again, a lot of speculation with this one in terms of who Potiphar's wife was. I don't suspect that she had a lot of godly girlfriends um, to reach out to. Uh, I, I, I just don't, I don't see that. I think, um, who knows how many other people Joseph had under his care, you know, in that house that were not good for her. Um, so resist indulging boredom in others. Uh, that's another takeaway. <clears throat> How do you do that? Like, what, what, is that, what does that even mean? When you say resist indulging boredom in others, what, do you, what comes to your mind? Some of two bored people get together and just decide to be bored together. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. 
Or would that be just giving into it? Ah, yeah. It could okay. be. Yeah. All right. It, it, okay, it I mean, you're bored and I feel sorry for you, so right. I will give more than I normally would. Possibly, correct. Yeah, think about it like that, and, and uh, it goes with the next statement, which is idleness and never only affects the idle. So when you do have idle hands, um, it often has consequences that reach beyond just you. It's not something. Um, uh, it's not something that that <clears throat> is just an uh, isolated incident. Okay, <clears throat> and when we stumble, um, confession beats my cover up, um, and of course, uh, I don't think Joseph was even given that opportunity really. Um, he um, he was really, I mean, uh, framed in all senses of the in all senses of the word. I think he was um, really taken advantage of. So, other thoughts or comments uh, so far? Uh, I just it's interesting because Joseph has not had the best life. You know, like mm -hmm. he his brothers didn't want him. They got rid of him sold him, you know, I mean, all these things, well, things are going well for him, but he's not had the best life. Right. Right. Now you have this high up wife coming after you. You could have easily said, you know what? Why not? Right. Why not? Why, why should I not get something in right. my life? Right. But he loved God so much <clears throat> that he knew that was wrong. Right. It wasn't for Potiphar. It wasn't for him. It was because he loved God so much. Mm -hmm. And he had a relationship with God that was so important to him that he ran away from stuff. Yep. You know what I mean? That's the reason. And so it's interesting because you look at his life and it is, it's not good, mm -hmm. you know, but he's getting rewarded and, and the Lord's taking care of him. And you read that <coughs> over and over in the story that, man, he was not going to disobey what God had in store for him. And that's, that's the, that's the big deal for me. And yeah, idle hands and Potiphar's, I mean, all these are temptations. If you're, if you're following God closely, Satan's going to throw everything at you. That's right. You know, I read this story. I think Potiphar's wife's not even clothed when she's in that right. house. Yeah. I mean, it's like a huge, it's not just a simple temptation. It is, right. you know what I mean? And he's like, no, get me out of here. Right. You know, and how amazing is that that he runs, you know? And so I just, I think that's the main thing for me is you've got a guy that's really had a hard life and it's not, nothing's really gone his way. When things start to go his way, this happens and then he runs away. You know, it's like things are just, and he's still, it doesn't matter. God is that important to him that he'll get away from him. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, you look at, I mean, when you see this, part of the idle hands kind of thing is that your mind just goes and goes and goes, and you just dream up all kinds of situations. And so it leads to, so picture, picture, <coughs> picture day one. Okay, day one, when Potiphar goes to buy Joseph out of slavery, you know, purchase him um, from the the, uh, the Ishmaelite who bought him from, you know, the, the brothers and, and all that. And um, maybe even Potiphar's, like, kind of has this ambition, like, hey, I got this guy that's going to take care of the household. Hey, everybody, everybody meet Joseph. He's the new, the new head of the household. You know, I'm a busy guy, so he's going to be taking care of things. And Potiphar's wife, who's already bored, okay, Looks and goes, wow, right? And so, and, and because of the fact that she isn't seeking honor God, she isn't doesn't have her mind in the mm -hmm. right place, her wheels just, they just go, and just go, and just go. She sees it every day, every day. So the temptation, so Satan really um, can can spot this weakness. I, I, we, I've been doing a lot of thinking, a lot of talking about the, the, the desires of your heart, right? And so temptation isn't even the issue. <laughs> The issue backs up before temptation because because it's the desires of our heart. Because if something is a temptation, it means that we have a desire for it in the, the behind that, right? If you think about the um, the fisherman uh, or the, the fish that sees the, the fly on the water. If that fish wasn't hungry for that fly, he wouldn't even be tempted by it. So if our if the desires of our heart are are, are in the wrong place, then that's why temptation even matters to begin with. So you know Potiphar's wife was not okay right she was not happy she she um was just in a bad state of mind and so her mind could race and race and race and race and race and, and, and we're left with that so you might as, as you're thinking about today and thinking about what's the big deal about boredom right or idleness and it may not be a big deal right now but it, but it can fester right and, and like i said earlier part of the lesson was that it doesn't just affect one person it can just end up blossoming into this thing um that 
as uh, it's as bad as our story. Okay, um, it's kind of kind of kind of where we're going, um, and that's that's really what addresses that first thing. So <clears throat> I'm curious, and, and I think this is kind of obvious, and you guys, I just want to talk about it a little bit. What's the difference between being idle, okay, and I'm just not doing anything, and and and, and the the thing that's warned against versus resting in the thing that we're actually commanded by Christ to do. What's the difference between those two things? To me, I would say when there are things that need to be done, whether it's physical or relationships, whether there's things that need to be done, that you just choose not to. You just not going to do that. I just don't want to. And you allow yourself to slip into a lazy kind of uh, mentality, whereas rest is you, you've done the things you're supposed to do. You, you know, you Completed the tasks that are put in front of you, and then you're resting. But I think of discontent and content. When you're idle, it's almost like a restlessness because you're not content. You're discontent. But when you're resting, you're content. I, I heard a great quote about procrastination. So first mm -hmm. of all, procrastination of the world, uh, procrastinators of the world unite tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, uh, or bad spellers of the world untie. Sorry. <clears throat> um, uh, yes. So the idea is that procrastination is born out of fear, right? It is this. There's something not right. So when idleness is happening, the question would be: Why are you putting off the things you're putting off? Why are you um, uh, caving to laziness? Right? What's the what's the the, the fear behind there? Where, where's the discontentment coming from? Um, I, I mean, yeah, no, I, that's exact, that's, it resonated with me wholly because some of the reasons I put things off is because of the things like fear of rejection or acceptance or, um, you know, fear that I'm going to show that I'm not good enough, et cetera, et cetera. So I put a task off as long as possible because I'm afraid of, of when that task is complete, how, it, how it's going to look, which is kind of, we're sort of getting off in the weeds here, but, um, but I think you've got to ask yourself. Why do you have, if, if, if idle hands is a thing for you, you got to ask yourself why you're doing it. Okay? What is it about idleness that's so appealing when we're called to seek after God and have you know, our, our desire to be after God's own heart, right? <clears throat> so um, I, this, is, this is important to look at. And I, and I think it's a heart issue. It's a mind issue. It's where is your, where is your head, okay? Is it, I love that. I hadn't thought about the discontent content thing. Um, and I really hadn't thought about the, the, you know, putting things off and kind of having that laziness, that procrastination. <clears throat> um, for me, it was, you know, when I'm resting, when I'm resting in a godly way, where it, is my head on God? Am I, am I communing with Him? Am I um, uh, listening to Him? Am I talking to Him? Is there a connection there where even though I'm not moving, I'm not working, I'm still in community with God? And then over here in this... Uh, in the idle side, the bad part, am I trying to escape, right? Am I avoiding my problems? Am I putting off something? Am I discontent with my life? So therefore, I need to put something in my brain that will help me escape the whatever, whatever issues I'm going through, right? And I don't know, again, to, 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 take, to bring this full circle, I think about the idea of... Um, the fact that we that we speculated uh, about why Potiphar's wife did this, okay, and, and that we really kind of extrapolated the fact that that she was just a wife that just had too much time on her hands, okay, um, and and this seems like an extreme into that, okay, but I want what I want us to think about today as we kind of process this is. What are we going to do in our lives to not let that go that far? Does that make sense? Like, where do we draw the line? Where do we say to ourselves, okay, where am I discontent? Or where am I procrastinating? Or where am I avoiding tasks because of fear? You know what I mean? Um, so as you walk away from this story that's typically focused on Joseph, but, but thinking about... Um, uh, but but our focus on on the mistakes that Potiphar's wife made. Ask yourself, um, like like I said, what how do we how are we going to redeem that idle time? What 
are we going to do to face our fears or to face procrastination or to face discontentment? Um, and talk to God about that. You know, um, ask, you know, when you're in that rest moment, look at God and say, God, why am I putting this off? Why am I discontent? You know, um, why, what am I afraid of? You know, ask those kinds of questions of him and ask him to reveal those things to you. Um, ask him to give you the wisdom um, to see where you are using idle time to put off something that, that you know, should be done or, or how it can fester. Okay? Festering is the main thing here. He, Potiphar's wife let it fester until she was so enamored that she got the devil to the best of her. So, any final comments before we wrap up? I heard the bell. I want to pray right quick before we before we go. <clears throat> Father, um, I ask that you give us wisdom in this. God, this uh, it feels kind of like a non-issue. Um, God, but I pray that you give us the wisdom to see where it is an issue. Um, if, if we are we're not spending our time wisely. God, give us the wisdom to see that. Give us the wisdom to discern where we need to change and where we need to focus on you and chase after your heart versus our own um, our own escape or, or whatever it is that we are chasing in our world. Thank you so much for your son who died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins so that we have the opportunity to figure this out, Father. Uh, it's in your son's name we pray. Amen.